it's been way too long since I've done this last, but here we are doing the thing, the voiceover for the video. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Okay, so remodeling the gym that is in the fancy area of San Myshuno. This was for my not so berry challenge that I've been doing on my Twitch channel. If you would like to watch that, the VODs are on more Esberry. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I'm really bad at sticking to things. <laughs> so we have made it to red gen, uh, yellow gen has been born and we were just moving her in. Anyway, I was remodeling the gym that's already there because long term, I'm trying to replace all of the buildings in the game, but they keep putting out a new world, which makes it very hard to keep up. Um, and also, you know, I'm not very focused on the whole project, clearly. But anyway, so remodeling the gym for the red gen specifically, because I've been having him come here to sort of like, you know, he's kind of vain, he's kind of cocky, he's a playboy, red gen, you have to sleep with everybody in the goddamn world. Um, and he lives in this neighborhood now because he's a politician. So it just all sort of fits with him, his lifestyle, his character. This is where he's been picking up women, so many women. A couple men. So anyway, so it's, um, I tried to make it look pretty like, uh, you know, upper scale blend into the environment. It's really important to me when I do builds that there is consistency for the world that they're in. So you'll see later I do the roof so that it matches the skyscrapers in this neighborhood and it looks really cool from the map. I should also mention that this is not all the footage. Apparently, I either lost the footage or I finished this in a stream, but I will have the screenshots at the end. I do this really cute, like little Zen garden in the back um, and like sitting area by the pool. And then what else is missing? There's like a couple spa tables missing downstairs. Otherwise, everything's here. Oh, wait, no. Also, I'm remembering a bunch of other stuff is missing. God damn it. Well, you know what? That's just how life, life, life moves on. It's a sim speed build bit video. You'll survive or you'll leave if that bothers you. And that's fine. You know, you do you. Um, I didn't want to completely remove the building. But as you see, I basically do rebuild the entire building, but I tried to keep parts of it. All of this front facade is going to go away in a second. And I didn't like how flat it was. I didn't like the windows, but I did try to use a lot of stuff from the fitness pack because I don't know, it's very specific in style and I don't get to use it very often. And I tried to limit the pack use kind of. There's a lot of spa day. There's... A lot of city living, a lot of fitness, and I think a lot of eco lifestyle. Now that I think about it, I don't think I limited the pack. I feel like it's a lot of kits, though. I think. I'm mean, gonna be honest. The last time I was doing YouTube videos like consistently, kits didn't exist yet. How weird is that? It's been way too long. I don't know how I was doing two videos and two like decent speed builds. A week and I was in school I don't know how I was doing that granted it was mostly over the summer because I started streaming October 2020 and I started videos June 2020 and then once I started streaming twitch I stopped doing YouTube videos that wasn't the plan and I think part of it is you know, at the time I was still growing on other platforms um, and like gaining an audience to consume my content and, you know, sort of me as a brand or whatever, just through streaming. And with streaming, like you make the product, product is the stream, and then you're done. 
I mean, theoretically, you should also be like putting clips out there and doing other stuff. But, you know, the sum of it, the sum of it, you make the video, you, you make the stream and then you're done. Whereas a YouTube video, you're doing the build, which takes me hours. And then you're editing the footage, which I've been here for a couple hours. Um, and the voiceover, and then you post it and then you have to promote it. But even the like posting it, you know, and filling out all the information that really you should have in there. It just feels like such a drag. It's probably my least favorite part of editing and posting videos. I don't mind the editing part. I multitask and I like watching speed builds, even my own. So, and I like building. So like, oh, that's fine. But like making sure the description has all the information that I should be including and like what mods I use and what packs were included. All of that just feels like a lot. I also think theoretically I should be including tray files. And I did sign up to be a part of the Sims resource, whatever that thing Merbobber is. Um, I have an account and I do have the ability to upload stuff. I just haven't actually sat down to like learn it. But, you know, I have been letting the social media aspect of making content get to me. And I've been letting my own, you know, general anxieties and, okay, trigger warning, um, or like mental health, I guess. I have OCD and it presents mostly as moral OCD, which is really <laughs> frustrating and hard to complain about because it sounds really obnoxious, but basically general social injustices or, you know, just societal problems affect me to the point that I'm not functioning. So like, obviously, right, let's go global warming, global warming, it's safe. Global warming is bad. We all want to do better. Like, I feel like that's a good general statement. Like no one is like, fuck the environment and like, doesn't care and doesn't try at all. Like we all care. Mine was getting so bad that I like wasn't eating. <laughs> I also have ADHD. And so, you know, remembering to eat, actually taking the time to make things. I also have chronic fatigue. God, I should just make a list at this point. It's ridiculous. Oh, this area is where I'm going to put is, is where I end up putting like little like manicure pedicure chair thingies and like a little entryway which you won't see me build but you'll see in the screenshots and this is on the gallery although now i do want to double check and make sure it's actually finished so if by the time you see this if you're interested in getting it and you go to the gallery and it's there there you go it's there what are they saying oh so like pre-packaged food is a much better option for me and like small, easy to grab snacks that I can just, you know, consume at will are better. Things like like hummus, a whole thing of hummus. I would eat it, a little bit of it, and then I would either forget it was there or get bored of it and not be able to eat it. And then it would go bad in my fridge. So then I have the anxiety of one, I just wasted food, which is wasting money. And I grew up very poor. And I have a lot of like guilt about wasting food, but then also, right. There's like people who don't have food and here I am wasting it. And then also, right. That's a plastic container. So it's like all of those elements led to a point where I like just wasn't buying food for myself. Or if I was buying food, I would plan on, you know, bulk cooking but then in reality i wouldn't have the energy or again they would go bad so moral ocd is really frustrating to uh have because it makes it hard to function and take care of yourself and it uh affects my depression to the point that i'm like not leaving my bed or being productive 
But then also, if you want to complain about it, it's like, yeah, I'm just like really depressed right now because the earth is on fire. People have a hard time understanding and taking that seriously because everyone's upset that the planet is on fire. And I you're like stuck in this headspace of like recognizing that reality and then also being stuck with the voice in your head that's like you're a horrible person for ever using plastic and you should just not exist. It's hard to get that point across. So I've been letting the moral OCD and the pressures of being a perfect content creator and respecting every single rule or expectation or, you know, protesting every single company that's making bad decisions because that's what I'm seeing on my Twitter feed is like, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't say this. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't support this. Don't play this game. And that's important to recognize those rules, but it's also inhumane, I think, to expect people to know all of these rules and to follow them. Like things like protesting a very popular international coffee company. Um, I mean, that's a bad example because that's a luxury item. I just think to a degree, every corporation has something shitty happening and they're doing something horrible. But then also, what is it like seven companies in the world own literally everything? There's only so many restrictions you can put on yourself as a person trying to function while dealing with your own mental crap and your own families and your own incomes and your own communities. And then on top of that, you know, there's this pressure to be invested in every single global tragedy that's happening. And, you know, part of that's because with social media, we can know now about all of these things happening. But mentally, we're not equipped to deal with that. We're equipped to handle our own communities. We're equipped to handle small, small portions of the trauma that we encourage each other to carry and that we guilt each other for not carrying. And then if people feel like they can't live up to that expectation, often I've, I've observed that they just withdraw completely and they're just like, fuck all of you, like whatever. When really we should just be happy with people doing their best. And we say that we are, but then in reality, that's not what happens. And I also recognize that people are using, you know, the internet to just rant and be frustrated and upset. And I know that on like a logical level, but then emotionally, the moral OCD and apparently autism takes it to literally an inability to function. So within the last year and a half, I know this about myself that I have withdrawn, that I have tried less, that I haven't put myself out there and taken risks creatively um, as a content creator because I'm letting all of this impact my life to an unhealthy degree and an unsustainable degree. We all have to do our best to support our communities, to support marginalized communities and global issues like, you know, fucking global warming. But there's also only so much each individual can carry and we have to have compassion for that or we will all drive each other insane. And I'm already like, how many diagnoses have I mentioned in this one video? Jesus Christ. We're already carrying too much in our own worlds to expect each individual to carry everything else as well. So I'm trying to come back. I'm trying to push myself and I miss it. I miss having a larger community and pe meeting new people through content, which is one of my favorite parts of making content. Like one of my best friends now, uh, she's Canadian. I never would have met her if not for making content and becoming a part of this online space. And 
I just, I can't even fathom that. There are friendships I have in my real life, real life, if my on offline life that have grown stronger because of these friendships and because of these connections I made. One of my other best friends, I see her almost every weekend. She moved here recently. Again, only know her because of these online communities. So as much as we are caring about the pain and suffering of the people around the world, we also have to take the joys and, you know, the small things that make life worth living. We have to enjoy them while they're here and we can't just postpone them for the sake of carrying everyone's trauma. Because nothing that is horrible is going to get resolved within our lifetime. And we're only here for so much time. So don't be too hard on yourself if you are also struggling with this. Because I get it. But it's also not your responsibility to take care of everybody. Put on your air mask on the airplane first. Support others where you can financially and emotionally. And you have the privilege of being safe in your home. Use it to enjoy what you can when you can. Because we're all suffering as it is, but we're allowed to have moments of joy. Hi, it's Editing Rayleigh. I had so many awkward silent moments and ums that when I edited them all, I ran out of voiceover. So I just want to say I'm apologetic for the microphone quality. It's a new microphone since I recorded last and I had it way too close to my mouth. Sorry about that. Also, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Here are the screenshots. This is available on the gallery, sberry underscore games. It's in the description if you need. Be kind to yourself. Have compassion. Have patience. And I will see you the next time you come around. Come say hello on stream. Okay, bye.